A warm welcome to you, my dear children. Welcome back to Business and Accounting Studies. We have come uh, a long way, right? Um, can you remember at which point of the syllabus or in the topics lineup we are at now? Where, where, we, where are we at in the lessons lineup? Which unit? We are in unit three, children. Unit three, um, continuing with business organizations. That is the main topic or the lesson that we are in. Business organizations. Didn't we discuss about so many types of business organizations, children? We did. How many types of business organizations did we talk about? How many? Many, many, many. We talked about, you learned about many types of business organizations, right? And in our previous session, we discussed how to categorize business organizations into different types yeah i'm sure you remember and we talked about basis criteria criteria which are used to categorize business organizations uh, you know you already know what criteria are don't you what do you say yeah, you say yes, I know. We talked about different criteria, different criteria, uh, which are used to categorize business organizations into groups, different types. Okay. And uh, when I explained, when I was uh, trying to give you the, the idea about criteria, I used uh, the pen, the pen which I have right here. I used the pen and I said I want to categorize pens in the in the world into two main groups and I'm going to use the criteria ink. The criteria which I used was ink and using ink, considering ink, I divided all the pens in the world to two main groups. You remember, right? Ink pens and non-ink pens. So this pen fell under, this pen went to which group? Those, uh, that is a criteria, okay? And what criteria did we use to categorize businesses in the world? You should remember these things. Repeatedly I explained and we discussed about these things, right? Why don't you say so? Why don't you tell me the criteria used to categorize business organizations? First criteria, ownership. That's right, ownership. According to ownership, we categorized as private sector, public sector, two main groups of business organizations. Second criteria, second, second criteria was objective, objective, the aim. Yeah, you remember, right? Looking at the aim, we again categorized business organizations into two main groups. Looking at the objective, aim, this group was for profit, second group was not for profit. Good. And uh, the third criteria was this one scale. That was explained very well. You remember these things. Good. So, according to scale, we again categorize business organizations into two groups. Uh, first group was small and medium businesses and 
large scale businesses. Likewise, we talked about so many business organizations, sole traderships, partnerships, and now we are going to talk about incorporated companies. Special type of business organization very should be very well organized, more than a sole proprietorship business, more than a partnership business. A little complex when you compare these organizations, when you compare these organizations with sole proprietorships and partnerships. Complex. Let's see what these organizations are. Incorporated companies. Some say company in our country. Maybe you have heard some people, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of pronouncing. I'm not laughing at it. It's not funny. But some people say company, right? Company. Yeah, it's a good company. But the, the right way to pronounce this word is company. Company, okay? So incorporated companies. Incorporated companies. Let's read out the text, shall we? A firm which is registered under the Companies Act, number 7 of 2007, with a legal personality and can raise capital by issuing shares, with a limited liability. You get pictures now, right? You must be getting pictures in your heads now. Yes, from the previous sessions, the things that we discussed, things you learned. Three things you should notice here. Three things, children. First, I'll take blue, the Companies Act. Don't you remember the Companies Act? Don't you remember the Companies Act, children? Companies Act, it was a law, a, a, a legal um, regulation that you have already learned. I have already taught you about this legal provision. Legal provision, it's a legal provision. It's a law. When we learned about partnership businesses, this legal provision was introduced to you. Remember? Remember? Companies Act. This act has, uh, you know, uh, uh, sentences or provisions regarding the number of partners in a partnership business. This law has stipulated, has stated the minimum number and the maximum number of partners that, that is in a partnership business. But incorporated companies, these organizations, to these organizations, this law directly applies. What is the law? Companies Act, number seven of 2007. Remember children, you should bear these things in mind. Okay. The main legal provision or the act uh, which contains the legal provisions relevant for incorporated companies is the Companies Act number 7 of 2007. Next, I'm going to use the red color. Legal personality. Something that was very interesting in the last session. We got this. We got to discuss. 
about legal personality. Students who did not uh, get the opportunity, get the chance to watch the previous session, I advise you to watch the previous session because these things were explained. Okay, legal personality. I said, there are business organizations, children, which are considered as people or persons, just like me. You know, I'm a person, I'm a citizen of Sri Lanka. My identity, to, to uh, prove my identity, I have a, a national identity card, NIC, with my name, Prabhat Singh, with my uh, nationality. There is a NIC issued to every person in this country. Just like we, you and me, we have a personality. These organizations have a personality. They are considered as, legally, they are considered as persons. Interesting, right? That is called legal personality, right? And they can raise capital by issuing shares. Issuing shares, the company collects the capital from the shareholders. Shareholders are the owners. Okay. Now, something I should mention. Don't get confused between stakeholders and shareholders. Stakeholders and shareholders. Most students get confused in between these two okay children stakeholders are all the parties who are interested in a business organization stakeholders these are shareholders shareholders i will match these two okay Shareholders means the owners. Owners of a business organization, but not any business organization. Owners of an incorporated company. Incorporated company, the owners are known as shareholders. Owners of a company. You got it? Not stakeholders, children, shareholders. And they issue shares to the shareholders. Shareholders has the ownership of shares, and which means they have a share of the company. They own a share. They are the owners. Okay. So it's a legal entity. Every company is a legal entity, has a legal personality. And issuing shares to the shareholders raising or collecting capital by issuing shares to the shareholders and shareholders liability is limited now i'm not going to explain what is the meaning of limited liability i'm not going to do it now because we discussed about these things in the previous session children limited liability it, it was a disadvantage for sole proprietorship businesses. It was a disadvantage. Limited liability was a disadvantage for sole proprietorship businesses. No, children, you should remember these things. Sole proprietorship businesses do not have a limited liability their liability is unlimited that is the disadvantage of sole proprietorships remember even for partnerships unlimited liability 
is a disadvantage. But for incorporated companies, it is an advantage because it is not unlimited. Liability is not unlimited here. Here, liability is limited. We are talking about this children limited liability okay it's a big 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 advantage for this type of organizations right so if anybody asks you about a limited company incorporated company there we go we found something else. Limited companies is another name for incorporated companies. You got it or not? Tell me. I said limited companies is that is another name for incorporated companies. Okay. Good. Let's finish this. The owners of these limited companies are the shareholders. Didn't I tell you? Their liability is limited. Didn't I tell you? To the amount they have paid and liable to pay for the shares they have purchased. Their liability is limited. Liability is limited. Okay only to the money that they have invested in the business in the company which means it's um, it's simple i'll give you a simple example just to understand this children let's say your father has a company your father has a company the name is uh, let's say hmm What's the name of your father's company? Let's say X Limited PVT LTD X Private Limited. Okay. And when you come, you know, to your adulthood, when you come of age. <clears throat> after your you know a levels uh, and after your tertiary education like the university after after you graduate from the university after you get all these things settled father invites you to join the business you join the business how do you become an owner of this business No, children, you can't just walk into a company and say that um, my father is the owner of this business. All right. So uh, from today onwards, um, I am I'm, I'm going to be uh, running this company because I get the ownership of this company from my father. No, it's simple. No, you can't say that. You have to be a shareholder. You have to buy shares. It doesn't matter. Your father will issue shares. I mean, the company will issue shares to another shareholder because your father is the chairman or the managing director of this company. He will arrange, you know, the necessary things and issue shares to you and maybe he will not even take money from you for the shares but but the right way is investing money and buying shares okay let's say you bought shares uh, worth of uh, your dad is the owner i mean the managing director md and you become another shareholder, you 
okay or you can be a director even right but you have to buy shares buy shares let's say you bought shares worth of um, 100 worth of shares just just as an example i'm giving this 100 worth of shares so you are liable for only that 100 if you have invested that 100 if you have already paid the money right if you have already paid that amount and when you bought shares and you have nothing else to pay your liability is limited to that if the company falls if this falls if this company collapses collapses down if the company gets bankrupt for the loans of the company you don't have to pay by selling your private property you don't have to pay or sacrifice your private property your liability is limited to that 100 it's limited to that 100 okay but children the the, the, the situation might get even like more complex and if the company is liquidated or if the company is you know closed down uh, if there are like more liabilities more loans to pay back uh, as the MD managing director and as a director you also um, will be answerable but but the general law or the the condition is shareholders liability is limited to the capital they have invested or to their share capital okay right let's just take it off from the screen hmm? I'm, I'm just highlighting this part their liability is limited liability is limited to the amount they have paid or have to pay for the shares they have purchased that is called children that is called limited liability remember um, so all proprietorships do not have limited liability partnerships do not have limited liability they have unlimited liability good we'll move on characteristics of limited companies features of limited companies what 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 are they like characteristics of incorporated companies following are some major characteristics that can be seen in incorporated companies one incorporation under the companies act simply saying every company must be registered registration gives the company a legal personality or i'll i'll put it like this registration you can memorize it as incorporation let's um, let's let's get it like this registration Okay, is a uh, is, is is like similar to incorporation or incorporation is similar to registration and when the company is registered it must be registered okay under the companies act when the company is registered the company gets a legal personality okay i'm pointing out this thing legal personality 
right? So every company must be registered or incorporated under the Companies Act. In order to commence an incorporated company, it is required to be incorporated under the Companies Act. As per the provisions in the Act, a duly completed relevant document should be submitted to the Registrar of Companies. Okay. Continued existence. Second feature. A company will continue, children. It will continue. It will continue to do business even though the shareholders are gone. I, I, I'm sure that you understand. Even though shareholders change, the company will continue to do business because it's a legal person. Legally, a company is a person. A person. Legally, a company, a limited company, is a person. So it can move ahead by itself. Something like that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not a biological person. These things you must be able to understand. Because there is a legal, separate legal personality to every company, companies can continue doing business, even though the shareholders come and go. Okay, that is called continued existence. I'll ask you a question here, children. Do sole proprietorship businesses have a continued existence? No, no, no. Do partnerships have a continued existence? No. But incorporated companies have, they have a continued existence. Since a company is considered as a separate legal person, separate legal person or entity from its owners, the death of a shareholder or shareholders being bankrupt shall not affect to the continued existence of the business. Good feature, right? Very good. It's a very good quality or a feature of incorporated companies. Ability to register with limited liability. It has a limited liability. Shareholders have a limited liability with regard to the debt and other liabilities of the company. Okay, shareholders have a limited liability. The liability of shareholders is limited to the value of shares they have purchased. I explained you this thing, right? Hence, they are not required to sacrifice their private properties, unlike in sole proprietorships and partnerships. Unlike in sole proprietorship businesses and partnership businesses, not like those businesses. In these businesses, liability is limited. Right? No need to keep your neck on the line. Just, just joking. Can raise capital by issuing shares. Can raise capital by issuing shares. Okay? Incorporated companies can issue shares to the shareholders and collect capital. Oh, just for your memory, I have included these pictures or the images of some private limited companies. Uh, this name is blurred a little bit. It doesn't matter. It's a company and it's a private limited company, right? It's a private limited company. All right. See, children, private limited companies have this um, this 
way of showing that they are private limited. PVT LTDs, that is the short form of private limited. Okay, simple things. Then we have a PLC company, Sampad Bank PLC, public limited company. Well, um, sometimes uh, we blur the names of private organizations because, uh, you know, they might not like people using their names, but this is a public limited company and uh, it's a popular company in, in, in the old, whole island. Uh, one of the leading banks of our country, Sampat Bank PLC. But I just want you to notice something here. This is a public limited company and this is a private limited company. What is the difference? Children, take these things into your heads right now, okay? Private limited companies cannot issue their shares, cannot issue their shares to the general public. Okay. They cannot issue their shares and invite the general public, the entire population, the, the citizens of the country to join their company by selling shares to the general public. No, cannot do that. Private limited companies cannot do that. They only can sell shares to friends, family members, and their relatives. Private limited companies cannot sell shares to the general public. Okay, but public limited companies, these companies have the authority, have the permission to issue their shares to the general public, to the entire citizens or the population, whoever who is interested to buy, can buy the shares of public limited companies through the share market. You are going to learn more about these things when we move on with the syllabus, with the lessons. So, just a brief explanation, okay? And I have shown children how a public limited company and most of the time a public limited companies are larger organizations, larger than private limited companies, okay? Uh, issue, they can issue, I hope you can see this, they can issue shares to general public. Okay, they can't, I mean private limited companies can't. Okay, and I have shown how a public limited company have expanded their business operations throughout the whole world. I'm sure that you recognize this company, the company which sells these brands, see, Lipton, Flora, included so many brands here, Signal, Toothpaste, Surf Excel, Comfort. So, um, most of the time, children, a public limited companies are larger organizations which are widespread maybe not only in sri lanka 
all over the world multinational companies okay some say multinational some say multinational doesn't matter public limited companies and pri private limited companies okay so remember these organizations have these features incorporation must be done continued existence ability to have the limited liability for the shareholders and can issue shares and raise capital we have advantages and disadvantages of limited companies i will always use this word children because this is easier and you too can use that um, for incorporated companies you can say limited companies okay let's see what are the advantages huh first one can raise more capital of course they can raise more capital because there are more owners not like sole proprietorships not one owner they have more owners um just to give you these information i must mention this here for public limited companies for plc's children um owners can be unlimited owners can be unlimited which means they can have any number of owners unlimited owners maybe 15 maybe 20 maybe 50 maybe 200 maybe 2000 any number of owners they can issue shares to any person any, anyone in the general public so owners can be unlimited right for private limited companies children i will write it here these are relatively that means comparatively compared to uh, public limited companies uh, these private limited companies are mm, smaller okay let me make it clear to you now they are relatively smaller Rel relatively okay compared to public limited companies relatively smaller and cannot issue shares to the general public to the general public cannot mm -mm, cannot no they cannot issue shares to the general public and most importantly this feature about the owners owners can be one to 50 one to 50 owners not more than that so children these are the um these are the differences between a public limited and private limited companies very briefly short and sweet okay because we are we are going to discuss about these things in detail i'll just make it visible to you by 
selecting a okay black larger organizations issuing shares to general public and owners can be unlimited just like that relatively smaller organizations cannot issue shares to the general public and owners can be only one to 50 even one person can start a pub private limited company not a public limited company okay so these things remember children okay moving on we talked about the advantages and the first advantage was can raise more capital and that's why we we went back and we again took some time to talk about owners uh, advantage as an advantage you know that they can raise more capital who these companies incorporated companies or limited companies receiving a legal personality you know that every um, incorporated company has a legal personality continued existence they can continue with their business operations even the shareholders die or even though they leave the company doesn't matter company can continue it's called continued existence and limited liability managed by a board of directors there is a board of directors okay like the knights of the round table like uh, they are the managing the, the, the persons who are responsible of managing the company directors and the company can be managed by a board of directors so how many how many children how many five five advantages at least remember three or four okay you can remember the the most important advantages most important ones um which the things which um, sole proprietorships and partnerships do not have okay what mm, legal personality and limited liability with continued existence those are the advantages most important ones all right so advantages now disadvantages more legal provisions more barriers legal barriers it's not so easy to start a company you know the law we you have to respect we all have to respect the law so there are more laws which are um affecting limited companies that's a disadvantage Profits and ownership are shared. Even profit, as the managing director, you can't keep all the profit to yourself. You have to distribute the profit, divide the profit to each and every shareholder. You don't like it, right? Yeah, it's a disadvantage. People don't like it. But profit must be shared. And ownership also shared. You can't be the sole owner. You can't be the only sole owner of a company, right? Not like a sole proprietorship. Shared. Those are its advantages. There you go, children. Advantages, disadvantages. Can we move on? We take the next type of 
organization that is cooperative societies. All right, children. How do you say this word? Say it with me. What is the word? Cooperative. Cooperative. Don't say cooperative. Don't say cooperate. Cooperative. You have to break the first part. Cooperative. Cooperative. Cooperative societies, okay? Now, now, now. I get this question so often. Students ask me, so cooperative, cooperative, cooperative. You say always cooperative. Sometimes we don't understand. We learned about so many organizations. We learned about sole proprietorships, partnerships, companies, and under companies, we learned about private limited companies, public limited companies. What else are there? What are these cooperative societies? I tell, I say one word and they understand. One word. Samupakare. Samupakare. That's the Sinhala word, children. Most people, they are familiar with this word. They know this name. Everybody knows when, when, when we say Samupakare. That is here. That is what we have here. Cooperative societies means Samupakar. Look at the pictures. <clears throat> Look at the images. That is what we have here. Coop City. You have seen these organizations in every city. Coop City. Okay. Coop stands for cooperative. 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 Samupakar. Here we have Here we have Cooperative Rural Bank. Okay. Uh, I'll give you another name that we use in our country. Sanasa. Huh. Sanasa Banku. Sanasa. Those are cooperative banks. Cooperative Rural Banks. Okay. And this is the logo of cooperatives. Well, I don't have to say that cooperatives are established with a non-profit objective. I don't have to say this. You know this, right? Or maybe you don't know. All right, then you learn now. You learn this thing now. Children, cooperative societies or these business organizations are non-profit. They fall under for-profit organizations? No. No, children. They fall under not-for-profit organizations. Okay? Let's look at what we have under cooperative societies. A cooperative society is a democratically controlled independent organization. Democratically controlled. I'm going to underline just like I do in every slide. These are the most important things you must take to your heads. Democratically controlled independent organizations. Achieving common needs of a group, which means well-being of a group of individuals. Voluntarily gathered and enjoy collective ownership. Mm -hmm. Their aim is to achieve 
uh, common names. Achieve common needs of a group of people or a community, a village. Hmm? Did you get the message? The common needs of everybody, the needs that everybody has. Like most of the time food items, dry food, you know, dal, rice and sugar and milk and these things. Everybody needs them, right? Um, so these organizations, cooperative societies are set up in order to help the people to ensure the well-being of the of that village or, or community okay and they are set up by individuals the people itself voluntarily and they enjoy the uh, ownership of these organizations voluntarily that means people they, they, they get together they get together and they form this type of organization a cooperative and their objective is to achieve their common needs their welfare hmm. okay. everybody's welfare and they don't aim to earn profits that's right children good so Groups of individuals voluntarily gathered and enjoy collective ownership. A cooperative society can be started at least with 10 members. 10. Remember, children, at least these organizations must have 10 members. Okay. Here you go 10 members. Owners or members must be more than 10, 10 or more, more than 10. Uh huh. Now that's something you should remember. Mm hmm. Okay. Capital is mainly provided by the membership subscriptions. Members pay a membership fee. That is known as a subscription fee. Membership subscriptions. All right. Capital or the money needed to start to invest to, to start a, a cooperative society the capital is collected by members as membership fees okay this word subscriptions it means fees membership fees uh, that's a point to remember at least the members should be 10 to start a cooperative society cooperative society the minimum number of members 10 okay points to remember uh, children i always say i always use these gestures and these gestures and especially i use these gestures to say to point out things that you must remember to point out things that you must remember because these things have come regularly in the papers in your examinations okay so remember 10 members at least and uh, must be registered cooperative societies they must be registered under the cooperative societies act Act number 5 of 1972. How many acts? Well, you get 
quite a bit quite a bit not a very like a lot but you get a bit of um, legal acts and provisions to remember remember act number five of 1972 is relevant for cooperative societies cooperative societies act number five of 1972 okay uh, these are the examples we already we saw we saw you saw some examples right sri lanka multipurpose cooperative society that is this multipurpose cooperative society cooperative rural bank and samupakare co the cooperative logo all right that is what they have mentioned here this is sanasa sanasa do your memorizing sanasa is a cooperative society okay keep in memory next we will talk about characteristics of cooperative societies and advantages plus disadvantages democratic control first characteristic democratic control the very first characteristic the democratic control is that the cooperative society will be controlled by a board of directors elected by its members and the decisions are taken based on the consent of the majority democratic you know the even the country that we live in it's a democratic country well they say that it's a democratic country yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a democratic country okay a uh, democratic socialist republic of sri lanka okay democratic means the the opinion of the majority matters opinion of the majority so these uh, cooperative societies i told you that people a few individuals more than 10 get together and they form um, um, a cooperative society and they ensure or they provide themselves the things that they need commonly their common needs for their well-being that is the purpose likewise when they get together and they when they form a cooperative society uh, the, the 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 society is managed by a board of directors elected by all the members elected by all the members okay is that clear to you board of directors elected by its members hmm? what is the other organization um, which is managed by a board of directors uh, tell me now who can tell me can you tell me what is the other organization which we learned just a few minutes ago which is managed by a board of directors they are incorporated companies just like that uh, but they have shareholders these organizations have members okay uh, managed by board of directors controlled by board of directors elected by the members and the decisions are taken with the consent of majority with the opinion of majority one down second a feature is voluntary and open membership members can get together voluntarily you know nobody force nobody uh, you know can push somebody to take the membership of a cooperative society if you want you can take the membership if you don't want you can leave voluntary and open membership so any individual can obtain membership and any member can withdraw from membership all right voluntary and open membership collective ownership of members everybody owns the 
society. Cooperative society is owned by its members and all its assets are also owned by all members. Collective and ownership, uh, sorry, collective ownership of members. Common expectations and needs. The main objective of a cooperative society is to achieve the well-being of the members and development of the society. So, common expectation or objectives of the majority. Common objectives or common expectations. And most of the time, the objective or expectation is social well-being. All right. Shall we? Advantages and disadvantages. Every organization has advantages and disadvantages. At least remember three from each organization. Okay. Let's move this way and find out the advantages. Democratic control. I told you, democratically controlled everyone's opinion matters and the majority's consent majority's opinion is taken as the decision democratic control okay second acting for the well-being of members social welfare acting for the well-being of members members and the community local community The well-being, the welfare of the community or the members. Government provides various incentives for conducting cooperative societies. Government sponsors, you know, government is friendly with the people who are running cooperative societies. And government provides various facilities, provides various incentives. That is what this point says various incentives to conduct cooperative societies shared benefits nobody is going to take the profit home <laughs> no nobody is going to take the profit because they don't aim for profit cooperative societies they don't aim for profits and the profit is not belonging to anybody or anyone the benefits are shared among everybody that is what it says okay then children we have some disadvantages yeah yeah disadvantages limited capital very hard to you know collect capital a large capital maybe like millions of uh, rupees very difficult because people get together and form these organizations cooperatives voluntarily and they are, they, they, they are not investing a large amount of money obviously they just pay their membership fees so limited capital it's a disadvantage should adhere only to the stipulated policies of the cooperative act societies act now you tell me what is the cooperative societies act tell me tell me tell me what is the cooperative society what is the act which affects cooperative societies act number of Mm -mm. Act number 7 of 2007. No, that is the Companies Act. Companies Act number 7 of 2007. What is this? Cooperative Societies Act. And policies are separately given. I'm asking you about the Act. That's right, number five of 1972. Good. Uh, it was here, right? 
number 5 of 1972 children it's here Cooperative Societies Act number 5 of 1972. So it's um, Cooperative Societies Act number 5 of 1972 remember the year were you born back in 1972 i don't think so right so this is the act relevant for cooperative societies and policies are different and they are separate you have to adhere to these policies and act provisions of the act number five of 1972 that's a little bit of fuzz you know it's a it's something that uh, that is seen as a barrier disadvantage okay children that is about cooperative societies we talked about how many features? Democratic control. Second, voluntary membership. Third, collective ownership. Fourth, common expectations or the expectation of social welfare. With that, features were done now advantages and disadvantages also done about cooperative societies okay children with that um, we are going to wind up this session we talked about business organizations unit three um chapters the chapters about business organizations types of organizations all right today in this session we talked about incorporated companies that type of organizations and cooperative societies don't get mixed up incorporated cooperative Just remember incorporated companies as limited companies. Okay. Limited companies and cooperative societies. So, likewise, children, we talked about cooperative societies, non profit first organization. First organization. We talked about features, advantages, and disadvantages. Yeah. Let's see what is the next organization. Many, many organizations. By now, you have learned about how many? First one, the type of organization, the first type, sole proprietorship, sole traditionship partnerships incorporated companies or limited companies cooperative societies cooperative societies so these three are all for profit this one is not for profit cooperative now we are moving on to the last organization in the private sector that is also a not for profit organization here you go colorful pictures colorful pictures right what are these associations clubs and societies associations or we call them clubs or societies not nightclubs children okay let's find out clubs and societies right 
let's look at this what does the image show you asian farmers association for sustainable rural development okay let's just take this asian farmers association these are associations children societies in our country in our language we call them sangha mm -hmm. sangha mm -hmm. govi sangha farmers association right remember children they their objective is not profit they are non-profit not-for-profit organizations okay non-profit organizations associations in your syllabus uh, it, it, it has not put a lot of focus on these organizations but we'll just take an introduction about uh, these organizations which are uh, what are these organizations associations or societies okay I have shown you another association or society right here mm -hmm. the scouting association right association of scouts sri lanka scouts association okay they have formed this association uh, for the well-being or for the um welfare of the scouts scouting societies of sri lanka okay and we have another association right here slfpa sri lanka food processes association mm -hmm. this is another association Who's S L F P A S L F P A Sri Lanka Food Processes Association? <clears throat> they might have um, gotten together to uh, organize their field or their industry, which is the food processing industry. Are these hotels? maybe there can be hotels even all the hotels all the hotel owners and food processing companies um, such as you know food processing companies such as um, well um Rigam, um maliban manchi food processing right yeah <clears throat> these type of food processing associations uh, organizations companies they get together and they form a society for their well-being something like that okay so children remember associations are not for profit their main objective is what social well-being so objective is social well-being and these associations are established especially in order to achieve well-being of the members well-being of the members well-being of the scouts well-being of the farmers the milk farmers kirigovio you know these things are uh, always seen on news even they go protesting asking for a good price asking for a market you know in sri lanka we always see protests yeah so these protests are uh, the farmers protests and other protests are organized by these societies associations that they have because these associations or the, these their societies aim for their well-being well-being of the members that's what it says here right so here you go children some of the societies that we um, 
C in our country, sports clubs, farmers associations, funeral aid societies in your village, in your community, in your lane, do you have a funeral aid association, funeral aid society? People get together in the lane or in the village and they form this association. Yeah, just like a cooperative society. Uh, funeral aid means Maranadar Samit. Samit. Sangha. Okay, that's what, that's how we call them in in a local context. Masjid associations um, formed by mosques, right, for their well-being. So, associations, children. The very last business type of organization in the private sector. Starting with sole proprietorships, partnerships, limited companies, cooperative societies and associations. These three are profit oriented, but these two are not for profit. With that, we finish, we wind up today's session. Uh, we are talking about business organizations, children. In the next session, we are going to talk about public sector organizations or the government organizations. So I hope that you would join with me in the next session. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon.